Hello everyone, I'm Pablo Renates with HTI Global. Today, our short video will be dedicated to the Bell 212 412 Twin Pack Engines ITT Compensation Calibration. ITT Compensation um, is a very uh, straightforward process. We're going to be uh, pretty much talking about the whole um, calibration of this. Uh, we're going to have two different locations to look into it when you're doing this one. You have to remember for engine number one is going to be on the left, or engine number two is going to be on the right. Also, uh, in order to calibrate these compensators, we have to look on this data tag located on the power section. This is the power section of each one, and you have to make sure that at this data tag, uh, the numbers, you have to do uh, use it specifically for that engine side when doing the calibration. Anytime we talk about temperature on this process, we're going to be talking about centigrade or Celsius. Uh, there's no use of Fahrenheit on this process. Pretty much everything is going to be in Celsius. Now, the reason why we're going to have to do this kind of a, a calibration is because the twin pack made by Pratt and Whitney and the A-frame made by Bell, they have to have some kind of calibration so the pilot that is flying a helicopter and the cockpit copy made by Bell, uh, when the pilot is looking at the ITT, he needs to see a true temperature of the engine. And that's why Prada Winnie created this system, so always the pilot is looking at the real temperature of the engine. And this is something that us as a mechanic or engineer, we need to do a check or calibration every time something is being altered on this. Now let's talk about uh, ITT or T5, what does that mean? Uh, ITT is, means inter-turbine temperature, and the reason for this name is because the location where they are located, they are. They are between N1 and N2 turbine wheels, or also it's called T5 because the station was located. So you could say that inter-turbine or T5 are in the same spot. Where do you find this information? This information is going to be found on the specific model you're working on it, Bell 212, 412, and you're going to go to chapter 96. On this specific case, you're going to have on uh, paragraph 100. Remember that these manuals can change locations, so just make sure you're on the right chapter and don't memorize the location. You have to search it out. And in this specific way, um, this is just a reference for you, but as you're going to find it in chapter 96, Remember, you have two different uh, locations for different purposes. This one is for calibration. Then when you go to the engine, chapter 76, it gives you a way to do um, a verification. Normally, the calibration uh, is done inside the hangar with a calibrated device called Barfield. And the verification is just running the helicopter and you're just checking the, the temperature ranges between being compensated and not compensated are as the, the detail in the data plaque or data tag. Here on the 412, we're going to have it also in the same uh, chapter 96, a different paragraph 143. And also, I pointed out here, this is a, a chapter 76 where you have the verification. Again, it's as an advice after you do a calibration with a uh, bar fill, which is done inside the hangar with the engine not running, it should be nice to do this verification because when you're doing the verification, you're using the real, uh, the probes to do this, the temperature probe, where when you're doing the calibration, we're using a bar field. Now, do you have to do it? It's an advice, uh, I leave it up to you guys and your civil aviation requirement if that's, uh, it's a part of your requirement in country. Now, this is only calibration. Now, if you need to go further on troubleshooting the system, Bell will guide you, but also you have that information on Prada Winnie manual. Nowadays, Prada Winnie also offers uh, web-based uh, um, the manuals. So it's up to you guys and your organization how to uh, register. Um, my advice would be uh, just get your web base and it give you the, the peace of mind of being updated all the time. Also, we're gonna have different uh, manuals depending on what kind of engine you're talking about or the one you're working on it. If you're talking uh, 3Bs or the D engines. 
So make sure whichever you're working on it, you're looking on the right maintenance manual. Now on this slide, we're gonna have different components that together is gonna give that information to the pilot referring to temperature of the engine. Uh, first of all, we're gonna have the probes. We're gonna have eight probes, two type of metals, alumel and chromel, which when they are heated, produces very small voltage. Location where they are, right here. And also we're gonna have the terminals that are coming out from the uh, probes outside. This is where we're gonna connect in cables. And here, this specific one is an old one. We don't have a bulletin. This is a SB where from here, you're gonna have two uh, bridges going to a bracket. And the bracket is where you got connecting all the cable. Back in the C box, I was told you show you earlier, here is the uh, ITT compensator. And also we got the instrument located on the cockpit. We're gonna have different type of instruments. These instruments um, have different part number, of course, but also have different ranges. If you look at this one, we start getting from 600 degrees, uh, a scale on 10 degrees increments. Some instruments, this scale of 10 degrees increments start at 700 degrees. That's why one of the advice I give you when you're doing this calibration, trying to go around 700. So that way you never have to be uh, guessing which one you're working on it. But again, uh, it's just an advice. On this specific slide, uh, we're gonna find the uh, ITT compensator. On this specific case, it's gonna be for engine number one because it's on the left. And also I would like to point it out that this one here, if you look at it, it doesn't have the cover. The cover has to function first, it's for covering to protect it. Secondly, when you screw it in, you're gonna have some jaws that what it causing is to pinch on it and lock the adjustment in place. So after you calibrate it and we're torquing it, you really, you are locking the calibration in place. You see the range here and this range uh, if you look at it, if you are turning it clockwise, I'm gonna increase the range of compensating and not compensating. This is something I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about later. And if you go kind of clockwise, you are reducing that range. Out of the um, ITT compensator, we're gonna see that there's no on and off switch. So really the way you're gonna make this uh, compensator compensate or not compensate, is to this cannon plug. When you pull the cannon plug, you are turning it off. When you plug back in, you turn it on. This is gonna be receiving a, a feed of 28 volts DC. So this is something you guys, when we're doing this calibration, you're gonna be pulling and pushing in, removing or installing this cannon plug. That's the way how you know when the uh, the indication in the copy is being compensated and what is not compensated. Okay. In the carpet, if you go there, and we're going to have two indicators, one for engine number one and one for engine number two. So this is very important when you're looking at it, you need to remember if you're working with two guys or you have a helper, make sure he's looking the right one because uh, you might be on the right side, engine number two is looking number one and tell you that it doesn't work is looking in the wrong place. So make sure that uh, there's a good communication of the guy in the cockpit uh, and the guy back in the engine, okay? And remember, these are the ITT indicators. Now, this is only to uh, reinforce because after this, we're gonna go into a real exercise of the calibration for the ITT uh, indication. First of all, we're gonna have here the ITT trim compensator and we're gonna have the cannon plug right there installed. So you need to uh, remove the safety wire because you're gonna start removing and installing it. And remember, every time you remove, there's no power here, means it's off. When you plug it back in, you're gonna have 28 volt DC, it's on. In order to do this calibration, you need to turn the helicopter battery on or better, I have an APU installed on the helicopter, plug it in. Um, for anyone that uh, haven't done this or they wanna see location and are trying to get a better picture of the whole thing, here is the whole engine compartment. 
You're going to have the twin pack installed, the augmentation system, the ducts, and all so on. And right here, we're going to have the power section. This power section on the forward firewall, we're going to have the plaque. This is a data tag. And this data tag is going to have a very tiny numbers there. On this specific case, I'm trying to blow it up, and I, it shows that it's 90 degrees Celsius. This 90 degrees Celsius means that the difference of the temperature indicated in the in the in the gauge compensated or not compensated the difference has to be that number 90 degree so this is very important and you need to check it out every single time you're doing this calibration or any replacement of the power section or of the ITT compensator so remember location it's right here this is the firewall here the tag and it's right here Now, because we're doing a full calibration and uh, the helicopter's inside the hangar, uh, all this calibration is gonna be done without running the helicopter. So, don't worry about it. No matter of fact, you, cannot you don't have to have the transmission installed, pretty much the engine, the indication, the cable wiring, of course, be careful. Make sure that uh, you can power the helicopter in order to do this. Now, in order to do the calibration inside the helicopter, inside the hangar, we need a special device called the bar field. This device, uh, one of the things I like to emphasize is have to be calibrated. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, sometimes us as a mechanic forget or engineer forget about this is that uh, you have to check this is calibrated. What does that mean calibrated? It means very simple that this is always correct and everything else wrong. So if you don't know if this device calibrated, how do you know whatever you're getting in the helicopter is right or wrong? So you start getting a, uh, an issue that uh, maybe you're trying to correct something that is supposed to be corrected because you're using a device that's not calibrated. So my point in all this is make sure that your device calibrated. Now, because this is used for different issues, in the next slide we're going to be talking about how to set it up the bar field in order to do the calibration. And because the bar field can be used for different helicopter and for different uh, uh, indication and troubleshooting, we are only gonna use this part here for this uh, video, which is gonna be only for uh, calibrating the uh, ITT compensator. This is the bulletin I was telling you earlier. Uh, if you look at it here, on the picture you have before a slide we have the two terminal here and that's it now in the past you used to connect and remove everything from here a costing problem when Prada Winnie create this bulletin now it's on this bracket where you're gonna remove these two knot you're gonna pull these two cables and on those leads is where you're gonna be connecting the caimans from the uh, bar field now this is very important because when you're doing this calibration, you don't want to connect the cayman direct here. You need to pull it out, and then the two leads for these two cables where you're going to connect the caymans, okay? Now, you also have to make sure the polarity, and uh, we talk about, you see on the other slide, that the alumel is the, the large one, is the negative, and the chromel is the small one, is the positive. You want to see that in a moment. Now, this is the final slide. In here, we're going to combine a lot of stuff. And also, we're going to do an exercise. First of all, the instruments. This specific instrument starts the 10 degrees increment at 600 degrees. Some other instrument starts at 700. My advice, the way I do it, is not mandatory. I start everything on 700. So I don't have to be guessing which one it is. So I do 700. I'll explain that in a bit. We're gonna have the terminal. This is how the terminal comes from the props, the internal of the engine. We don't see anything further in. We're gonna just work in from here if you have this SB. This is an SB. If you have the SB, which is very common nowadays, and I advise you to do it, we're gonna have here the two uh, pro, um, the two studs and the two leads from these white cables. So you're going to remove the nuts, those two nuts, you're gonna remove it, and you're gonna pull the leads 
and those leads is what you're going to be connecting the buses later on remember polarity and the way you know this is by the size of the those uh, studs are different diameter of course when you say large it's the bigger the uh, bigger um, stud and the small diameter stud and you know alumacromel positive negative this is very important to know when you connect in the bar fill you have to remember that uh, uh, the bar fill come with its own clips and um, uh, caimans do you remember do not alter anything on these cables because this is part of the calibrated uh, equipment okay so you're going to connect those two clips or caimans into the lead of this white cable if you connect these cables or the bar fill into these ones you are not getting anything because this is going to the probes not to the indication <clears throat> the next one is remove uh, remove the cutter, uh, the safety wire, remove the cap, and leave exposed the adjustment um, knob in there. Also, you're gonna cut the safety wire, lose the cannon plug, and you're going to remove the cannon plug because the first step on this will be not compensated. So we're gonna remove the 28 volt, meaning the uh, ITT compensator is gonna be off. Bar fill is used in different helicopter and use it for different purposes so you have to make sure you set it correctly you find this information in barfield or also in the helicopter and here this is the first knob which is the function knob you're going to put an indicator test the second one you're going to use resistant range and you're going to set it up to two uh, milliamps now this number is very interesting why 790 i told you earlier i use 700 for everything starting point and I use 790 because that the data tag tells me it's 90 the difference between compensated and not compensated with range. So, for instance, what happens if my data say data tag says uh, 32 degrees? So I put here 732. I just set it up here 732. What about 50? 750. Whichever number appear here, I add it to 700. That's the way I do it. Okay. Now because it's not compensated. When we put power on, we send it up. Now this leads in here, it's gonna send this calibrated perfect voltage come from the instrument. Uh, it's gonna go from here to the ITT compensator and from the ITT compensator, go to the instrument. So you start seeing the needle on the cut pit moving and should read the same numbers this. 790, it should say 790. The helicopter allows you to have a plus or minus five degree differences and you are okay, you don't have to do anything. If it's more or less than this, than the five degree, then you have to troubleshoot it. Most of the time it could be the instrument, ITT compensator, resistance on the cable, and so on. So you have to do troubleshooting. This particular video is only for calibration. Troubleshooting, normally it's better to do it through a, a, a training lead instructor. So make a training with us more than happy to give you more details also if you have more videos you can uh, comment down which one do you want if you have enough people interested in one specific uh, issue I'm more than happy to create a video um, um, feel free to contact us on read our webpage or different uh, uh, video we have in our channel now this is the perfect world when you have this okay 790 we got copy 790 we say it's okay the next thing is make sure that the calibration of the range which is supposed to be 90 is 90 so what i have to do i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna connect back the connector putting what 28 volt when i doing this i should have indication of 700 degrees meaning the difference between not compensated and compensated supposed to be that number this is the perfect world what happened if I have a problem and I only go to 720 so now instead of being 90 I have 70 degrees so what do I have to do I have to go here I have to go here and adjust remember if I want to increase the range for the compensation I have to go clockwise I keep moving it I can read the degree if I have to we go there the specific you don't have to be specific you can try an error like a 
you do a little bit, if you go over, you can keep doing this as many times you want it. You are not going to damage anything. So you can go uh, remove it and install the cannon plug until you got the range. So every time I remove it, it should go back to 790. Every time I plug it back in, I should have kept going closer to 700. My idea or my my goal is that when I come not compensated and compensated, I have 90 degrees. When I have this 90 degrees, you are okay, and that means the compensation is done. If this is engine number one, you have to do exactly on engine number two. The only difference is this. Make sure you read that data tag for engine number two, because they are not the same. Okay, and that will be the final uh, process to do ITT compensator adjustment. If you like this video, comment it down. If you have any concern or any uh, chapter on the whole helicopter, anything that you want to talk, please uh, comment down. You can also uh, access our webpage, contact us. I'm more than happy trying to help. More videos are coming, so register in our channel and hopefully you enjoy this video. Thank you very much. You have a wonderful day.